So now we talked in detail in the first two sections about the acute suppurative otitis media. Let's move on to some other types of uh, otitis media besides the suppurative otitis media. In this, we will talk about acute necrotizing otitis media, otitis media with effusion, and etiology of uh, necrotizing and effusion otitis media, and also we will talk about the clinical features and some hearing tests. Acute necrotizing otitis media, necrosis, Necrotizing is the word from the necrosis or conditions that uh, can lead to a different organisms that can lead to necrosis. Necrosis is the death of the cells or death of the tissues. So necrosis is death of the tissues. Acute necrotizing otitis media is seen in children suffering from measles, scarlet fever or influenza. After all these uh, diseases or infectious, infection, these are all the different infectious diseases that are common in the children. So after this, patients or children might have necrotizing necrotizing otitis media or the, uh, it's a very, very serious condition. It is mainly caused by beta hemolytic streptococcus, beta hemolytic streptococcus. Uh, as a result of the infection by beta hemolytic streptococcus, what happens, there is destruction of whole tympanic membrane. It's necrotizing. So imagine it's a bad condition. It can cause destruction of whole tympanic membrane and we can actually, there is destruction of the middle ear uh, structures like ossicles and other. So it destruct, destroys the whole tympanic membrane with its annulus mucosa of promontory ossicular chain and even mastoid air cells. Profuse otorrhea. Rhea is the flow. Auto is ear. So there is discharge from the ear and it's profuse discharge. Lot of discharge from the ear. There is complete destruction of the tympanic membrane along with the annulus mucosa of promontory uh, ossicles and mastoid air cells. Otitis media with effusion. This is the insidious condition characterized by accumulation of non-purulent effusion in the middle ear cleft. First, we talked about acute suppurative otitis media. In suppurative otitis media, there was purulent discharge, fussy discharge. But in effusions, usually the discharge is not purulent. Always, actually, the discharge is not purulent, non-purulent effusion or discharge. So it's the collection of the fluid which is non-purulent in the middle ear cleft. Here, this is, these are the, all the structures of the ear. We have external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, eustachian tube, middle ear space. So it's the presence of fluid in the middle ear cavity or middle ear space. It, it's also known as the glue ear and the pathogenesis, how it occurs, uh, the otitis media with effusion is due to malfunctioning of the eustachian tube if there is increased secretory activity of the middle ear mucosa. If there is a eustachian tube not functioning properly, if it's blocked or if it's not functioning, not maintaining the pressure, or if the mucosa of the middle ear is produced Using excess of uh, secretions, it can cause uh, uh, if, uh, middle ear effusion, and that is mainly non-purulent effusion. 
the cause of uh, uh, middle ear or otitis media with effusion is um, the malfunctioning of eustachian tube. What are the different factors that can cause malfunctioning of the eustachian tube? We have adenoid hyperplasia, eustachian tubes very close to them. There are adenoids present. If there is hyperplasia or if they become big, they can put pressure on the eustachian tube and that can cause eustachian tube malfunctioning or obstruction. Then we have uh, chronic rhinitis and sinusitis also because of uh, sinusitis and nasal infl infections or inflammation that can cause uh, pressure on the eustachian tube also, mainly due to increased secretions that can cause uh, edema or blockage of the eustachian tube. Then tonsillitis, uh, there are tonsils present in the uh, neck, enlarged tonsils or infection of the tonsils can cause uh, malfunctioning of the eustachian tube. Then if there are malignant tumors of nasopharynx that can cause malfunctioning of the eustachian tube and if there are palatal defects like cleft palate can cause malfunctioning also. Then allergies uh, like uh, obst that ca cause obstruction of eustachian tube by edema. If there is increased secretory activity of by the middle ear mucosa, if there is unresolved otitis media, inadequate antibiotic therapy, if there is recurrence of otitis medias, it can cause effusion in the middle ear also. Viral infections like uh, adenovirus, rhinovirus, which can cause upper respiratory tract infections. So all these are very common cause that leads to uh, middle ear effusions, allergies, obstruction of the eustachian tube, viral infections. Now the clinical features of uh, you, uh, effusion, otitis media with effusion. Symptoms are there is hearing loss, delayed and defective speech, Delayed speech, especially in the, this is the case in children, if there is a, a effusion in the middle ear as a result of uh, diseases, we mentioned measles, scarlet fever, uh, hearing loss is there. And when the children cannot hear properly, they have delayed speech also. So all this is because of defective hearing. Mild ear aches are also present. The picture of the hair you can see there is dull and opaque tympanic membrane with loss of light reflex. There is effusion in the tympanic membrane, there is dullness and there is loss of light reflex. Fluid level and air bubbles are present. If you see through the tympanic membrane, you will see the fluid levels. Thin leash of blood vessels, and then there is retraction of the tympanic membrane. Hearing tests are performed to check how bad is the hearing loss and the tests usually perform. We have tuning fork tests, which are the Weber test and the um, uh, Rennie's test are the two tests commonly performed. This is the picture showing the Rennie's test in which the tuning fork is vibrated and put in, for, in the bone and the in front of the ear. Air conduction is usually more than the bone conduction. Then the test is audiometry is um, how well they can hear. And then the x-ray of the mastoids is done. And then impedance audiometry. All these tests are performed to check the hearing of the patient. 
the treatment is um, uh, medical treatment of the patient is we can try decongestants anti-allergic measures antibiotics can be tried and there is middle ear aeration is done surgical means are myringotomy and aspiration of fluid myringotomy is important sometimes to drain the fluid present uh, uh, grommet grommet insertion is insertion of the ins grommet to uh, drain the fluid. So in the tympanic membrane, this is the grommet in the tympanic membrane. So that's the surgical means of the treatment. Incision is given in the tympanic membrane to drain the fluid also. Tympanotomy or cortical mastoidectomy. Mastoidectomy, ectomy is the removal, otomy is the opening. So both can be performed mastoidectomy or tympanotomy. All these are the different methods of treatment. We can try the uh, medical treatment. We can try the surgical medical treatment can be symptomatic, can help uh, relieve the condition. Sometimes fluid can be reabsorbed and antibiotics can help. But if not, then we can go to the surgical treatment in which incision is given and then we can do the grommet insertion. Surgical treatment of causative factor is also important. So that was all about the other types of uh, otitis media in which we talk about the necrotiting otitis media, uh, co what causes necrotiting otitis media and how it can be managed and treated and what are the signs and symptoms. Thank you for watching scardia.com.